What's going on, guys? This is Aaron from Departures Capital. We're here with Serafino Yacono, Chief Executive Officer and Director at NG Energy. Nice to have you back, Serafino. How are you doing today? Well, I'm doing well. Thank you. Thank you for having me at your show. Yeah, for sure. I'm excited to get an update. So it's nice to have you back on the channel. Can you start by giving us an update on NG Energy since we last spoke? You know, how are things going? Well, you know, lots of that has happened since uh, last time that we spoke. Um, the projects are all advanced now, um, ready to start production. Let's start with Maria Conchita. Maria Conchita, the gas facilities have been built, tested. We had to do extensive tests, uh, uh, first with nitrogen. Now we're loading up the facilities with gas and then uh, testing the 14 kilometer pipeline to connect to the main grid. And by the end of this month, we should be uh, uh, delivering gas to our customers. Timing couldn't be any better. Natural gas in Colombia goes between six and 750 per million BTUs. So uh, there is more money to be made for our shareholders on this thing. And uh, we are we have finalized all of our contracts. We have finalized uh, with the with the with the uh, people that will buy the gas from us, the mostly utility companies, and uh, we're going to be uh, cash flowing very very quickly in this company. Um, on Sinu Nine, um, we uh, finalized all the permits about three weeks ago. Uh, we started building the pad that's going to be uh, uh, receiving. Um, uh, the drill rig that's going to do uh, the magical one well to start. Um, again, all of uh, this is going to be towards the end of the month that we're going to be ready to drill it. It takes about seven days. And um, remember that this is not uh, a well that's going to be, we're doing wildcat. It's just a development well. So there is gas there. We know there is gas there and we're just gonna start drilling the first well. What has changed since last time we talked is that we were gonna do this well and then uh, later on do a second and then uh, you know over time do a third. We have changed our scope of doing things. We think that natural gas is so needed in the country that we are leaving uh, the drilling rig in place. So we're gonna drink, uh, drill the first four well one right after the other. So between now and September, there's going to be four wells drilled in the field, which will then give us the full potential for us to build a facility so that we can deliver good quantity of natural gas. The surprise on this uh, on the Sinu 9 field, it's something that we have known for quite a long time but we never concentrated our efforts on it because we were looking mostly at the gas at the time. On the west side of the deposit, there is uh, uh, there were four slim holes done uh, about six years ago uh, by the ANH, that's a national hydrocarbon uh, company. The ANH um, put in uh, uh, four slim holes. That's That was for testing if there was potential for natural gas on the west side. To their amazement, what they discovered that there was a new area would you put huge potential of not, of not only of natural gas, but also of light crude. Um, we went back in the last six months, redid some seismic work. We redid um some more studies in the area petrotech just finished a report on the uh, on the area and has assigned a very good area with a potential of about a billion barrels of uh, oil in place recoverability about 25 percent low recoverability about 80 million barrels of oil mid which is the normal that we usually you see in this kind of environment 
about 250 to 280 million barrels of 33 degree light crude. So what is the next step? As we do the first four wells in Sinu 9, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be hiring a, an additional a drill that's gonna go on the west side of the deposit and it's gonna drill right next to the slim hole that was done, um, a well. Um, it's very shallow, 2,500 feet. So it's very shallow, very inexpensive uh, drilling uh, 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 prospect. And uh, it's sort of a wildcat because we know that the slim hole gave oil, but we have to see what kind of pressure, what kind of recovery, and so on. But it's worth the effort for us to do it. And that's going to be what we're going to be doing in the next three to four months at the latest. This is a game changer because uh, the uh, way we see these gross wells, from my experience on the uh, Rubiales field, these are wells that give you about 1,500 to 3,000 barrels a day. So immediate cash flow, uh, no infrastructure needed. We are 40 kilometers from the main uh, oil port of Colombia, uh, Cobeñas, and therefore this will be a, a fantastic uh, discovery and a discovery that makes, that makes this company a completely different company. Awesome. That's a lot going on for you guys. So, you know, natural gas is widely hailed as a transition fuel with Europe now categorizing it as green energy. So can you tell us from your perspective where you see natural gas in the world energy matrix moving forward? Well, look, Europe has just declared natural gas as a green energy, and it's right. Uh, there's going to be a transition that has to happen in, this, in the world. I think it's, uh, although we do, have to do something to make things better for the uh, a global warming of this planet. It's not going to be a quick fix and a solution. I think it's a little bit delu delusional by certain people to think that by 2030, you're going to have electric cars all over the world. That's not realistic. Or neither you're going to see it in 2050. That's my personal opinion. What we got to do is we got to create technologies that make things better. Natural gas is the perfect transition to go in into making electricity that is going to be used by natural car. Oil is not going to disappear out of the face of the earth unless we don't want to make plastics, unless we don't want to make fertilizers, unless you don't want to have a computer, unless you don't want to have shoes mm -hmm. or clothes or many, 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 many things. And we go and wear just animal skins, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, it's not realistic. Uh, only 30% of oil is used for making gasoline. 70% of oil is made to use other products, and they're going to be around. What the world has to learn to be green, and not that I want to start talking about green, but it's worth, it's not to be wasteful, not to have plastic bottles that you throw away uh, every three seconds or throw garbage in the sea. These are the kind of things that we got to do. Definitely. So now let's talk a little bit about natural gas, the natural gas landscape. So, you know, through my research of the company and the Colombian natural gas landscape, the price of natural gas in Colombia had historically traded at a significant premium to the North American benchmark. You were talking a little bit about the price. So do you see this trend continuing and what is your outlook for the price of natural gas in Colombia? Well, the, it, it... Colombia, if you look historically, Colombia for the last for the last 17 years, natural gas has been always uh, uh, between four and eleven dollars per million BTUs. Natural gas trades uh, as a standard in Colombia at 12 percent WTI price. So if WTI is at eighty dollars, okay, natural gas by the time it gets delivered to the source, because you have to put transportation, it's somewhere between eight and $10. If uh, oil is a $40, it's almost a double of the amount of what it is. So Colombia's had a range between four and uh, 
And uh, like I said, 11, 12, I think that was the highest that I ever got for a short time. And right now, natural gas is being imported in Colombia at about $9 to $10 per million BTUs, which makes natural gas in country the best option and the best thing to have because you don't have to import it. And it's at around six to seven dollars. We believe that that trend is going to stay because uh, consumption of natural gas is not going down; it's going up. I saw that NG Energy was included in the TSX Venture 50 for the second year in a row. Congrats on that! Are you able to Thank walk you. us through the company's achievements over the past year and what the catalysts uh, are for you know 2022? Uh, look, I did the. The catalyst, uh, the, the achievement, we're very honored that, they, that they've told us that uh, we are one of those companies that try to be excellent in doing what it does. Uh, we made great money for our investors. Everybody seems to forget that two and a half, three years ago, when I, almost three years ago, when I took over this company, the stock was trading at seven cents. Mm -hmm. Today, it trades in the dollar fifty to two dollar range. It's a great return on investment. Um, what is the next catalyst? The next catalyst, we're going to be converting ourselves from a, a development company to a producing company, a growth company, and now a company that's going to be producing in the future also not only natural gas, but balancing it out with very light crude that it's very much needed for the industry in Colombia. Um, next step for us to graduate to uh, the Toronto Stock Exchange as a producer and possibly do a dual listing in the Tor in the London Stock Exchange. That sounds great. So both yourself and the NG Energy Executive Chairman have a shared history of building an energy company together in Colombia. Can you give the audience some background information on building Pacific Rubiales together and how it's been teaming up again, building NG Energy? Well, look, it's what we know how to do. We know how to build natural resource company. Uh, Rubiales was a very exceptional company, right place at the right time with the right price of oil and the necessity of oil. So we took advantage of, or what the market was looking pretty much like today with natural gas. Uh, everybody was looking for heavy oil at the time because it's where you get the best products for refineries and we developed a, pro a company that was producing uh, less than 10,000 barrels a day to a company that was producing 350,000 barrels a day and today 20 years later almost which is called now Frontera it still produces I believe 50,000 barrels a day of the same oil that we discovered 20 years ago so uh, NG Energy is our new baby, it's uh, a different type of company. It's run uh, more efficient, less bureaucratic. It doesn't have the uh, uh, 10,000 employees. It's run, it's run lean and mean. And uh, it's a company that's going to make money for shareholders and it's going to be there to pay dividends. Uh, I'm one of the largest shareholders in the company. With, a, with, a, with other people that are involved in this. And uh, the philosophy for us is to make this a cash machine over the years. Awesome, love to hear it. So what are some of the most significant catalyst investors and future prospective shareholders should be looking out for in the near term? Well, the, the most important is gonna be in the next 30 days, cash flow coming out of Maria Conchita, development out of Maria Conchita, um, um, there's going to be a, 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 a drilling uh, of four wells in the Sinu 9 that's going to, that has potential to bring production to 100 million cubic feet of gas a day, besides the 20 million that we're going to be producing out of uh, Maria Conchita. The upside of oil, that uh, a very oil that sells at about $120 a barrel. Uh, that's it's a new discovery or let's call it a new development area which is going to enhance cash flows and it's going to make this company even more profitable and uh, starting to work on the next third project which is Tiburon 
where there is massive natural gas, but it needs a development. Great. Well, where should investors go for more information about the company? Well, the website, uh, the website of uh, of NG Energy is a pretty detailed website. Um, I want to make it in your show clear. And some people have made speculation that we're going to be doing equity. I've been getting phone calls, equity financing, and everything. The, the company is very well positioned, and. Uh, uh, if we would have to do anything to grow this company, it's going to be done by debt and it's going to be done by uh, by internal cash flow to develop the uh, the growth of this company. So you want to look at the company, you go onto the website, look at the share, you look at the trajectory of the shares. This is a company that has made great returns for their investors. And I think uh, the big a payoff it's yet to come in the next uh, in the next months to come great seraphina well thank you so much for all those updates best of luck with everything i know you guys have a lot going on in the short term and uh yeah we'll ha we'll have to have you back on for more updates thanks very much take care bud if you like these videos kindly hit that subscribe button and the bell for notifications drop us a comment down below we'd love to hear from you and finally always remember departures capital is for information education and entertainment purposes only. Don't buy or sell a stock because you heard it on here. Buy or sell a stock because you've done your research, you've done your thorough due diligence, and you're making your own personal investment decisions for yourself. This video is not financial advice. Furthermore, this video may or may not have been sponsored by the companies that we've profiled within this video, and we may or may not own shares of any of the profiled companies in this video. If you want to know the full disclosure details, check the description down below along with thoroughly reading our disclaimer. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I look forward to seeing you in our next video.